tell you about the Mark of the Beast and the Antichrist real quick. Okay, uh, Mark of the Beast is going to be a, a, a global world system that you won't be able to, to participate in unless you reject Jesus Christ. This system, this system, you won't be able to buy, trade, or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. And then if you, and if you don't become a part of it, they'll kill you and your family and all that stuff. So, one thing about the mark of the beast is they, they have this chip called the RFID chip, which is radio frequency ID chip. The Lord identified through through His prophets that that is the mark of the beast, and you can't accept it. You can't let them implant it in you. No. Don't let them put it in you as a tattoo. Don't ingest it, and don't let them implant it in your right hand, like the Bible says in Revelation. It said no man will buy, trade, or sell without the mark. And then they get they get the uh, mark of the beast in their in their right hand and in their forehead. That's what the that's what the word of God says. And it says that any man that takes the mark of the beast, you're gonna come down with these grievous sores, and also. God's not going to let you into heaven because that's the ultimate form of treason. This RFID chip, it's a GMO, so if you take it, it's going to kill you. Eventually, the chip is going to kill you itself, and so you'll lose your life. And on top of that, you'll lose your soul. So the Antichrist, he's going to be a flesh man that's going to come on the scene, and he's going to be having supernatural powers that he gets from the devil. And he's going to be able to do miracles right in front of you. And so he's going to go into the temple over there in Jerusalem and pretend to be God. And all that stuff like that. So this guy, I mean, when he comes on the scene, he's going to be a smooth talker. Everybody's going to be in love with him because at first he's going to be uniting all the religions and bringing about world peace and all that stuff. And then the aliens, the, the UFOs, which are really demons posing as aliens are going to come down and confirm him like yeah this is the guy and this is God and we're on God's side and all this bunch of nonsense let me tell you how the real God comes back when Jesus Christ returns back he ain't doing world peace he's coming back as a conqueror and he first thing he does he burns up his enemies with fire that comes out of his mouth from the word his word sets people on fire the, the word coming from Jesus cuts like a sword and, and, and devours up all his enemies and people that's all underground, those Satanists, they're going to be trying to hide out and all that stuff. And they ain't going to be able to hide out because they're going to see him coming even through the rock. So he's going to make sure of that. So that's how the real Jesus Christ comes back. He comes back as a God. A God that's putting fire on his enemies. And there won't, won't be no mistakes. But before that, there's going to be false Christ and, and, and rising up like fake Jesus Christ. And then the, the, the Satanists and all these enemies are going to be saying, yeah, we got Jesus in the secret place. Come with us and we're going to show you Jesus and all that stuff. It's going to be fake. But the real Jesus, you ain't, ain't nobody got to go show you the real Jesus. Because when he comes, every eye is going to see him at the same time. So there's, there's no mistake. That's the most grand entrance there is. So don't fall for any of that other stuff. Don't fall for the Antichrist pretending to be God because he got a little bit of powers that he got from the devil and, and, and technology because they, they, with Project Blue Beam, they can make holograms of any religious figure that you want to think of just to fool you. So don't fall for any of that stuff. Uh, if they tell you you can't eat and, and we're going to kill your children or we're going to do all this and that, hey, you still can't deny Jesus. You got to hang on to Jesus no matter what because guess what? Jesus Christ died for us. You know, he took our penalty on the cross. You know, well, all of us have sinned and, and was worthy of, 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 you know, the ultimate punishment. But Jesus said, hey, I'll take their punishment for them. He said that to the Father. So he took our place on the cross so that we can have a chance to live with God and Jesus in heaven. So we can't wimp out and we can't deny him just so we can eat food or, or, or feed our family or save our own lives. You know, that's a coward move. So we can't do that. And if you do that, it's unforgivable. And don't think you're going to take the mark of the beast and then try to cut it off you later on and stuff because that thing ties into your nervous system. So once you have it, they can pretty much control you. You know what I mean? So if you, you have it, it's it. That's a wrap. You know what I mean? And then they can control you just like a robot. You won't be able to repent. And if you ain't doing what they said, they can send a signal to that chip and it'll cause you great pain in your body. So do not take the RFID chip. Do not take the mark of the beast. Hang on to Jesus with all you got. And don't fall for no fake Jesus. No false Jesus. Because Jesus ain't going to come back as no flesh man and be hiding out in some secret place. Or some flesh Jesus, somebody walking around. No. When the real Jesus Christ come back, he come back as God in the first.
first thing he's doing is burning up his enemies. He came peaceful the first time, and what did they do to him? They killed him. They murdered him. They were jealous of him. You know what I mean? So this stuff is getting pretty serious, all right? So uh, I'll tell you about the Noah High Laws. The Noah High Laws put teeth behind the Mark of the Beast system because the Noah High Laws came from the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin is the same punks that killed Jesus back in his day. Those losers. They, they murdered Jesus because they was jealous of him. Because Jesus was doing a good thing. He wasn't doing all that fake religion like you see in these, these fake churches now. That's all uh, Joel Osteen kind of churches. You know, just garbage. You know, just not even preaching the word. Just telling you what you want to hear. Not preaching against sin. Just being losers. So, nah. Jesus came with the real word back then. And they hated him. And all those losers, they killed him. So today the Sanhedrin came with this thing called the Noahide Laws. The Noahide Laws is a bunch of laws that sound like they make sense at first, but when you dig deep into it, one of the things about it is if the worship of Jesus Christ to the Noahide Laws is considered idolatry punishable by death. So that's how they'll be able to threaten you. And all that stuff going to work with this fake religious holy Joe called the Antichrist. When Christ, when the real Christ comes back, he's going to burn that sucker up. And then, then all those world powers is trying to fight against Jesus Christ, like he's a bad alien or something, he's going to wipe them out. He's going to mop the floor with them. You know what I mean? So, let's tell you, man, aliens and all that stuff, it's all local. They're not from faraway planets and all that. That's a bunch of garbage. Everything, we are in a closed system. Everything, the planets are all within the earth. The earth is the biggest. The earth is bigger than the sun, the moon, and everything. The earth is the biggest thing. The earth is bigger than the planets. Everything, God set up everything around the world, the earth. Everything is set up around the earth like a clock. The, system, the whole system is a closed system, and it runs like a clock. So ain't no aliens from faraway galaxies coming here and talking about they created us and all this garbage. They're fallen angels, and, they're, and they have... When they made, when they had sex with human women, they caused giants to be in the earth. And when the giants died, their spirits roamed the world as demons. This is where the demons come from. So these little fake alien, little little uh, light bulb head looking losers with the big black eyes, they're creating them down there in labs. You know, so they can have a body. All the, that body is is an interface for demons, and a demon controls that thing. And then down there in the underground bases, they got species that they're creating, mixing animal and human hybrids, and they're gonna bring them out and say, "These are aliens from other worlds. They're from other planets." And all this junk, and they're making them underground. You know what I mean? They ain't from faraway galaxies. That's just to bring that out to fool you. That's why they give you all these movies, Avatar, and all this garbage, and all this aliens, light bulb head dudes. Stealing people and kidnapping people and the saucers and all that stuff. So, the people that's being uh, taken on the saucers and all that crap, all this anti gravity crap crafts that we can make. Anyway, when they get taken on the craft and they see that they're going up, they never go into outer space. They always go up and they go down under the water in the ocean or they go underground. So, that's letting you know that that whole thing with the aliens is local. It's all local. It ain't, it ain't far away. And none of that. Okay? So just let you know what time it is so you won't be fooled with all this stuff like this. Just get ready and just hang on to Christ with all you got. Learn that Bible because the word of God has power against demons. You know what I mean? The demons can't do anything without permission. They have to get permission either from you, from your sins, or from God. And the only reason they want you to sin the demons is so they, they can attack you. You know, when you get tattoos on your body... That's a that's an interface. That's an attack point for a demon. Demons will, can attack. That's that's why they want you to get tattoos. So you ain't supposed to get tattoos according to the word of God. You know what I mean? So all this stuff is knowledge for you. And let all these things that I'm telling you right now, let it be a blessing to you. Let it be seeds that spring up later, so you won't be fooled when, when it's some smooth talker uh, giving it. They're gonna bring out cures that. Okay, let's check this out. They're gonna bring out cures and give this this antichrist dude the credit, like he came up with it, like the fallen angels, all these aliens, like they came up with it. Listen, it's human beings right now making cures for everything, left and right. And so the Satanists come up, they show up, they give these people money, and then they take these cures and hide them and shelve them, or or they murder the, the people that that won't sell out. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. So. It's all a big old plan. It's just, just a big old plan. And they've been planning it out forever. So it's a big battle on right now. The patriots and the good guys are God's forces against the Satanists. You know what I mean? So that's what's going on right now in the world. So just learn Psalm 91. 
be able to say it in the face of the enemy. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love God with all you got because he died for you. He gave up everything for you. He was so serious about you, his love for you, that he left his throne. The king left his throne and died for his people just to give you a chance to go to heaven to live with him. What other king done that? What other so-called God did that? None of them. They either want you to kill for them or something like that. But our God died for us. That's big. That's huge. Ain't, you know what I mean? That's the real deal right there. That's that's the God I serve. And this God is about love your neighbor as you love yourself. Bless those that curse you. Pray for your enemies. Come on now. Come on now. So that's the real deal right there. It's all about love. If you ain't got love, true love, you ain't got nothing. You know what I mean? And God, you know what he did? He made Adam and Eve. He didn't make Adam and Steve. You know what I mean? So anything that's you, you're feeling like you want to be a woman and you're a man or you're a man you want to be a woman, don't you know that they put stuff in the soil to make you feel that way? Chemicals on purpose. Uh, uh, I think it's one's called atrazine, and they spread it on all the crops. And this chemical... It, it, it causes male frogs to produce eggs and ovaries and want to and wanna be with other male frogs. And in, 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 in males, human males, it makes your body produce estrogen. So this is why you're born feeling this way. It was all it was all done on purpose. It was all done on purpose. But guess what? We love y'all. You know what I'm saying? Just letting you know what's going on. So you got to repent. Repent of, of what you're doing and just ask God to heal you. And just know what's being done to you. These things are being done to you on purpose. And that's why you're feeling that way. Because the reason that they want to promote that stuff anyway is because they're trying to reduce the population. They want to play God. They think they're God. They don't want to listen to God and his word, the Bible. But they want to they want to play God themselves. See what I mean? They're hypocrites. And they get to decide who lives and dies. They got this stuff. The, uh, the Georgia Guidestones. They got all this stuff written on the Georgia Guidestones. Oh, we got to keep the population down to less than a billion or whatever it is. So what? They're the ones that get to live? How do they get to decide that they are worthy to live and all the rest of us? They look at us as weeds and stuff like that. So look, that's the enemy side. So you got to get with it, get right, get on God's side, get on God's team side. And that's the Jesus Christ team side. Read that King James Bible, baby. Because that's, that's what he, he gave you instructions on how to make it to heaven. You know what I mean? Follow the four Gospels. Christ showed you what to do in the four Gospels. You know what I mean? People say, oh, Christianity killed this and that. No, he didn't. Catholics did that and back in the days. The Catholics came along and they was killing every, anybody that wouldn't convert them. And they were killing us if they caught us reading the Bible. They didn't want us to read the Bible. They wanted us to follow their nonsense and their traditions. You know what I mean? I'm talking about back then, the ones that was killing us. I'm not talking about the Catholics today that believe in Jesus, you know what I mean? Because many of them are going to be in heaven. But you got to know your history and stuff like that. And you got to know what happened. When you follow somebody, you want to call yourself a Christian, you follow somebody, that means you follow the teachings of your leader. Jesus Christ was our leader and our Lord. What did he teach? He didn't teach killing. Him and his disciples, they didn't kill not one person. Not one person. Okay? So it says, thou shalt not kill. What that means is, thou shalt not murder. That's what that means. It don't mean thou shalt not kill. It means thou shalt not murder. So self-defense, you know, you have to do what you got to do. You know what I mean? You, you know, God didn't make you as a doormat. But you got to use common sense. You got to use discernment. And you got to use love. And you got to use mercy. You know what I mean? You're not going to let somebody run up in your house and harm and rape your family. You're going to defend at all costs. You know what I mean? And that's what that means. You know? So just got to use common sense, people. You know, and, you know, y'all have it. Just use it. You know, we all got it. We all got gifts. We all got talent. So, I just want you guys to know that I love y'all. Don't be offended with me because I'm telling you this because I love you. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't tell you nothing. You know what I mean? Because I don't like all that static and, oh, oh somebody getting mad because I told them something that's trying to help them. No, you know, if I didn't care, I, I, because of that, I wouldn't tell you anything and let you just go ahead on and just worry about myself and just worry about me going to heaven and just say, forget y'all because y'all too hard-headed and y'all fuss back too much. So, no, I ain't worried about all that. I'm going to tell you anyway, and that's true love. Well, I'll put up with whatever you throw my way because that's true love just to tell you the truth, just so you can have a, a chance in heaven. Well, you can see me in heaven and shake my hand and say, thank you, brother Eric. Thank you for telling me that stuff, man. You know, you made me mad at first, but, hey, I'm here, here, here in heaven right now because what you said planted a seed in me, and I thought about it, and boom, here I am. Thank you, brother. So that's that's what I want to see in the end right there. You know what I mean? So, 
don't be getting mad and all that stuff. Just, hey, look at the word, man. You know, listen, the devil controls the information, okay? He controls the information. I mean, think about it. Right there in the Bible, it says the devil took Jesus up to a high mountain and showed him all the kings of the world, all the kingdoms of the world, and told Jesus, said, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all them kingdoms, okay? So that means that Satan hijacked them kingdoms, and that's how he offered it to Jesus. You know what I mean? He's trying to tempt Jesus with those kingdoms that he hijacked. You know, so he controls information. So that's why they're teaching you nonsense in school. Everything they try to teach you in school is against the Bible. Because these enemies, these devils, they want you to die. They want you to go to hell with them. You know, the demons. They already condemn and they just want company. That's what it's all about. Satan just wants company. So that's why he... Everything that's being taught is, is to go against the Bible so you won't have a chance. That's what it is. You got to wake up and see what the game is. That's the game right there in a nutshell. I'm going to break it down for you, okay? So that's what's going on. on people. All right? God bless y'all. Hugs and kisses from Jesus and all that good stuff like that. And peace. Nice solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits. Bible prophecy warns of a flesh man coming on the scene with supernatural powers that he got from the devil. Well, he will use these supernatural powers to do miracles in the sight of men, and these miracles he will use to fool the entire world into thinking that he's God or Jesus Christ or try to replace Christ. Let me tell you about the mark of the beast and the antichrist real quick. The antichrist is going to be somebody that's going to be a hundred times worse than Hitler. But when he starts out, he's going to be a beautiful speaker, uh, mesmerizing in appearance, and a man of peace. That's how he's going to present himself. And he's going to unite all the world's religions under him. And he's going to pretty much form... A religious dictatorship that will kill anybody that doesn't bow down to him first on his list will be to kill Christians to take the place of Jesus Christ and to claim that he's God he's gonna sit in the temple over in Jerusalem and pretend to be God well his system is gonna be financial economic and all that and you won't be you won't be able to be a part of that system unless you take an oath to him and reject all your former faiths like Christianity and whatever else you believed in. And if you ain't willing to do that, he'll threaten your family and threaten your kids and threaten your mom to kill them first in front of you and then kill you. But if you're a Christian, you know that you got to stick with Christ no matter what, even if it means death because Christ died for us. He gave us his all, you know, just so we can have a chance to live with him in heaven. So this uh, Mark of the Beast and Antichrist, it has teeth behind it because in 1991, these laws were introduced to the U.S. from the Sanhedrin called the Noahide Laws. And there's seven of them. But as you go deeper into these Noahide Laws, one of the tenets is if you will not renounce Jesus Christ, the penalty is death because worshiping Jesus Christ to the Sanhedrin and the Noahide Laws is considered idolatry. And so they'll murder you. These, the Sanhedrin is the same guys back in the Bible days that conspired against and murdered Jesus. Because they were jealous of Jesus. Because Jesus was like an innovator. You know, where they was all about that religion and exploiting people. But Jesus Christ came with the true faith, which was a family, family-based doctrine. Where you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is the Son. He's our Redeemer. He's our Healer. He's our everything. And He came to earth from heaven to show us how to do it. And the difference between Him and all these other false gods is Jesus Christ is the only God that said He wasn't too good to die for His servants. So He left His throne in heaven and came down here and died. Took our penalty on the cross because we were sinners and we were worthy of whatever punishment we were supposed to get by the bad things we've done. But Christ said, you know what, Father? I'll take their punishment for them. And if they follow me, I'll, I'll lead them to heaven. So leave them in my hands. So Christ is like our lawyer, our defender, our everything. Because Satan, all he does is accuse us of all, accuse us of all the bad things we do. He's like, hey, God, look at what they're doing. They're just like me. So I get to take them into hell. But Christ said, hey. If they follow me, my blood is on them, so they're mine, and I can take them with me to heaven. So that's what the deal is with Jesus Christ and this mark of the beast and antichrist system. This antichrist figure, he's going to have supernatural powers and all that. He's going to have everything that he needs from the devil to fool mankind. But
But just know if you're a Christian, you can't go along with them just to save your life or to eat or anything like that. Because if you do, God will reject you and you won't be able to go to heaven. So you have to hold on no matter how hard it gets. So it's letting everybody know about the Antichrist and the beast system. Alright guys, make the right choice. God bless you and I love you. Yeah, I received an update today on the mark of the beast and, uh, from the prophet of God. And uh, she was telling me about the Lord was letting me know about the RFID chip. That that goes in conjunction with the mark of the beast. Uh, do not take it. Do not let them inject you with it. Do not let them give it to you as a tattoo. And do not ingest it like taking it like a uh, tablet orally. Don't take it at all because taking the mark of the beast is unforgivable by God. He will not forgive you at all if you take the mark of the beast. And also that, that RFID chip, it, it, it is a GMO. So once it's in you, it's also going to kill you. And then on top of that, you lose your soul too uh, to hell. So have nothing to do with RFID chip. I don't care how much convenience they, they tell you it's going to be in all this. Just don't take it. All right, people. God bless. I'm going to read from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things, saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth behold I come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go no more out and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God which is New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay, I'm reading from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and this relates to the Antichrist topic. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us. As, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth, and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan 
with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivable and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie and that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Wherefore, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast, hold the traditions which ye have been taught whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Farther to go and shy away from running the football. I think this is a great spot to do it because most teams play you for the pass. Go ahead and run and let your linemen surge and fire out. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they will score. It's a 49er touchdown. touchdown. Officially, that goes down as a kick return of 107 yards. What a run. As they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. It's been a back and forth game. A lot of points on the board. And that return right there kind of indicative of how this thing's gone. Yeah, you've seen both teams go at it. And as you just pointed out, both of them have found the end zone. But just like in boxing, you know the blow that hurts the most? The one you didn't see coming. And that often is the case when it comes in special teams. Nothing separating these two teams on the scoreboard as the kick's away here. This is fielded at the goal line. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. At their own 24-yard line. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown. Now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. At the 27-yard line. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. You're not ready. You're not ready. Check 23. We're going to 53. Tighten up. Tighten up. Tighten up. Switch. 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 Run for Pollard. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. Here's Pollard again. Room here to run. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Tony Pollard, 70 yards, as his guys are able to regain the lead. Now you talk about the dominating rushing performances that you and I have seen together. This has got to be right up there. His fourth touchdown run of the game and another long one to boot. And I don't need to ask for a witness because you're right here with me. We are watching this, and we're watching such a performance that it's demoralizing for anyone on defense. You know, it starts out, coaches screaming, tackle him, get him. And after that last touchdown, I bet it's pure silence on that side of the ball. And this time, he'll be stopped short of the goal line. He might have been out of gas after the long run. In any event, the try for two fails. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line.
40, the offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. Well, that's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive go, into an interception. A lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action. I think maybe go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in it, and let him fling another one. Check, 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 check. Watch the safety creep. Deuce, deuce. 21, 21. I got that, I got that. On second and 11 now. Garoppolo. That'll be complete to Breda. And he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. You got it. You. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Check 48 to Check 48 to Two, two, two. Man up, D. Slam, slam. Check, 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 check three, check three. Under 10, under 10. 65, 65. Check, 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 check. Hey, gun, gun. Snap comes in one. Garoppolo. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Here we go. Call it again is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. The Notre Dame man, Jalen Smith, able to get a hand in and knock it away. Another go, incompletion with that one. He's just 7 of 14 throwing the football, 50%. Typically not going to get it done, is it? Well, let's just make it simple, and that's exactly why they trail. Showing it, showing it. He's coming, double up, double up. He's coming, double up. Check four, check four. Black. Jim, Jim, Jim. Hey, gun, gun. Back to the air on second. It's Garoppolo. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's going to have another first down here as the Let's tackle's go, made at the Let's Cowboys' 38-yard line. A gain of 22 yards. First down, 49ers. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Straight completions here 21, in this second 21. half. First and ten. Switch, switch, switch. Twelve, fellas. Here we go. Hey, zoom. Check three, check three, check three. Bang, 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 bang. Check 24, check 24. Alert flare, alert flare. Again, they'll throw with Garoppolo. There's the Washington Husky. It's Dante Pettis. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Two chunk plays in a row. The last one was over 20 yards, and so is this one. And the 49er first down. Here we go. 21, 21. Check 48 to Mike. Check 48 to Mike. I'll get him, get him, get him. Kill, kill, kill. Check 37. I got I got this. Inside the red zone, it's Garoppolo. And he will go down, a Cowboy sack. Here we go, here we go. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Mike, 48. 21, 21. Hey, Charlie. Hey, gun, gun. 48, Mike. Man, I got you. Man, I got you. Now Garoppolo. And the pressure gets to him again. Jalen Smith able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Kill, kill, kill. Slam, slam, slam. Sponge, sponge, sponge. No, lock, lock, lock. Lucky, lucky, lucky. I got this, I got this. From the gun on third, Garoppolo. And he's going to go down again. 
Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness that defensive line is eating them alive. Here we go. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Two. 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 Six guys. Check six guys. Say, say. Hey, alert. Alert. Garoppolo going to go on fourth down. There goes a deep ball, end zone, and no, it's incomplete. The Niners go for it, but it doesn't work out, and the Cowboys' defense is going to get them the football back. The Dallas offense here set to begin the drive. Their defense forced the turnover on downs, but they've got the lead. They're in good shape. Can't go into a shell here, right? Still got to be careful. Yeah, because you're still a long way away from your down time. So you've got to work on getting first downs, keep the sticks moving, right? Keep the clock going, and above all, ball security. Don't turn it over. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Check, check, 59. I'm going to run you over. I'm going to run you over. From just shy of midfield, Prescott. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. Absolutely ideal there. Get a good size play, get out of bounds. Well, you saw the coaching there. That is taught and it is emphasized. Get out of bounds, understand your situation, as well as just understanding the game. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Check 52, 49. They were going to 53. 49. Check, check 40. Hey, hey, kill, 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 kill. Betty Webb, back. They'll run with Pollard. And an alley to run. Touchdown, Cowboys. Tony Pollard, 34 yards. And the Cowboys, they push out in front further. Well, it'd be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now, but I'm looking at your face and I'm thinking I've got to be careful with that. Well, it's a two. Gone. They need to try to make something happen offensively. But maybe they should. Maybe they should. Try to get it to Jackson, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the tight. He got 15 yards there on the fourth down attempt and keeping the drive alive. To throw, it's Mahomes. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 40, and his guys are going to take over. Take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Ezekiel Elliott, a 16-yard touchdown run. And the Cowboys are an extra point away from tying the football game. For the extra point, and that makes the score 14-7. Cooper on the return. Cooper, 98 yards. And the Cowboys are an extra point away from tying the football game. I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos at their players. And they say, Throwing on first is Garoppolo. Oh, and this ball's tipped and intercepted. 
Picked off by Anthony Brown. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Cowboy defense has a touchdown. Yes, the old tip drill works to perfection there. Ah, oh, you're bringing back great memories. You used to love that drill. And a lot of times in practice, you work on it not just one tip, but multiple tips, just in case the ball stays in the air for a while. No, not at all. I did have a coach explain to me years ago that for some teams, that's how they have to deal with pass protection and their line blocking. But to me, it seems silly. Yeah, well, there's got a man. It's caught inside the 10. Touchdown, Cowboys. Jamez Holawali. Fifty five yards, and the Cowboys have broken the tie. How many times have we seen this late in the fourth quarter? Because you know the pass rush is getting after him, and they get up. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off at the 13. He's at the 50. As much And an alley to run. And he's into the clear. The 30. The 20. And he's in for the touchdown. Unfortunately, the O-line failed. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Okay, let's go back a little bit and see if my schooling comes to the front. What's that old saying? Those who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat. He told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row. I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. Inside the red zone, it's Garoppolo. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Anthony Brown. The 40. The 30, 10, 5, and he will score. Touchdown, Cowboys. This D wanted to put it away before we even get to the fourth quarter, widening that mark. To the interception. Here's Ryan. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off Byron Jones. And he will score. Touchdown, Cowboys. I don't know who all is to blame there, but I love seeing pick sixes. Nothing like seeing someone pluck it out of the air and go the other way and see people try to change directions. Hard to do. Here's Bosher to kick it away. Cooper on the return. There he goes, Amari Cooper. He's at the 30. 10. Touchdown. 96 yards. And the Cowboys will extend their lead. I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos that they're... One that's intercepted. Picked off Byron Jones. And he will score. Touchdown, Cowboys. Now that was a beautiful play. A pick six. 65, 65. On third and long, it's Garoppolo. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off Byron Jones. And he will score. Touchdown. 